Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Beyond Trust product endpoint privilege management, and it'll be deployed in Beyond Trust cloud hosted solution. And the use case will be installing endpoint privilege management on a Mac endpoint to enforce least privilege, and we'll review some application and elevation reporting as well. I wanted to review a quick architecture diagram. So here at the top, we have our privilege management endpoints for Windows and Mac. We also have our administrative policy editors with an MMC snap-in or through our web policy editor. Everything is 443 to the appliance, which is a privilege management cloud appliance hosted in Azure. Every customer gets their own dedicated privilege management beyond trustcloud.com URL and appliance. We have custom integrations with ServiceNow for ticketing system, AWS for SIM event log collection, Virus Total to confirm the reputation of those applications that are being run, as well as integration out of the box with Azure B2B for customer identity, as well as supporting your own customer identity providers such as Okta or Ping. We support SAML, OAuth, OIDC as well. So now I'm signed in to the cloud hosted endpoint privilege management product. Here you see my URL is beyondtrustcloud.com, epmgam.pm. And so here's the home page. It just shows kind of the computers that we have deployed, the versions they're at, whether Windows or Mac. But we're going to jump over to configuration to show where we can download all of the files we're going to need for this install. So if you click the configuration settings, there's a privilege management install. We're going to need to download the privilege management client for Mac OS, as well as the rapid deployment tool. And we'll come back and download these once needed. But for now, we're going to click over to the adapter install page. And there we're going to want to download the privilege management adapter for Mac OS. So you should have three items you downloaded there. And we're going to now move these over to the Mac system. So here we have that Mac system that we've actually used in a previous video on deploying remote support jump client. It's the Mac 20 system, same one we used. And I'm just going to copy over the files that we downloaded using the Beyond Trust Remote Support file transfer tool. I'm keeping my files locally on my temp directory, and I usually like to put the files on the Mac user's downloads folder because that's where I have my script execute from. So go ahead and copy those over. Once those files are copied over to the Mac system, we're going to want to open up the rapid deployment tool first. And go ahead and double click it to open it up. And for privilege management cloud, we're going to select this middle one privilege management console. And first, let's click over to privilege management for Mac tab. And I like to start here just because you need to check a couple of things here depending on how you want it to interact with your end users. I usually like to prompt users to copy as well as uh, not allowing them to modify or remove privileges, a uh, little tamper protection as well. And of course, we have tamper protection policies that you can apply to these Macs as well. And so clicking back to the privilege management console tab, you're going to copy and paste all the information from your privilege management adapter web login that's unique to your deployment here in these fields. You can leave out the group ID and certificate. You don't need to copy that right now. Um, but once you copy these four here at the top over, you're going to want to export them. And we're just kind of walk through that real quickly. So here's what it will sort of look like once you copy all the information out from under the Privilege Management Console adapter settings under Configuration. That'll have all the relative information you'll need to copy and paste here into these four fields. As I mentioned earlier, the Group ID, you can add that 
Um, once installed, it'll automatically join a computer group. I don't like to do that for testing just because I'm continuously moving folks back and forth to group and I like to select where it goes. But for automated deployment, you would definitely want to include a group ID so those computers, once it's already installed, it's already going to check into a group automatically and start applying policy. But for now, we're just going to leave that blank as well as certificates for cloud. It's going to use a, a public available certificate. And we're going to hit export and we're going to hit package. What's that going to do is open up a file browser and you can just save it under your downloads or wherever you choose to. And just look in Finder and you should have a file now called PMC settings with that date that you made the settings package. So now we're just going to go through a way to execute a script and I use our Beyond Trust Remote support tool that I've covered in another video on how to run canned scripts but I'm just going to take a look at the script here we're going to use and I'll zoom in and so I just add a couple of uh, echoes to kind of show what's happening here during the script so here we're going to be installing that privilege management cloud client and I we store it under the admin 01 account under downloads it's called the PKG file, and you see I just use a star there to kind of, regardless of the version, it's going to install that privilege management PKG. Next, we're going to install the settings file that we generated with the rapid deployment tool. That's also stored in the downloads. Um, it starts with a PMC, and it's a PKG file as well. After that completes install, we're going to install the PMC adapter. This one is actually a DMG file. So we do have to uh, mount it and run the installer inside of it, which is the PKG file. And then we just do some cleanup, detaching that volume and then echoing done. So now we're back to the Mac 20 device with all of the files. We have the settings file in our downloads folder. We have the privilege management for Mac client and the adapter all in our downloads folder. And so now we're going to run that CAN script, and you can run this script however you want. This is just how I do it with our solutions, and I'll also provide this script in the comments. So here I'm just going to run it, EPM, Mac install all, and it's going to confirm I want to run that script. Yes. And it's going to ask for terminal access. I'm just going to provide that password for elevation. And it's going to run through the steps there. And here you're going to need to open the security preferences. And of course, we're going to need to unlock it. And as you see, the script's kind of completing there in the background while we're doing this. And after unlocking it, you see here system software from application privilege management was blocked from loading. We need to allow that. As well as the notifications, we can allow those. And you see there our privilege management install is completed. We're just going to scroll back up through the script here. There you see installing privilege management client. Successful installing the settings was successful and the adapter was also successful. One more item we have to change as a requirement under privacy back under the security and privacy tab. We're going to need to find full disk access and check the box next to beyond trust security extension as well as files and folders. We should see one there as well. So now signing back into our privilege management console. Looking at the policy section. I've already created a policy called 01 EF Mac admin standard. And under computer groups, I have a computer group created with a similar name. So if we take a look moving over to computers, I'm going to find that Mac 20 system. Here you see it. 
since we installed the endpoint solution in the previous steps, it's going to automatically show up here in the dashboard as a computer. And if we had given it a group, it would have already checked into one of those computer groups we were looking at. But I like to manually assign it for testing. So I'm going to come in here and authorize this computer manually. And now I'm going to manually select a group, and I want that EF Mac admin standard group. After authorizing that system in the web console, now going back to the endpoint, I'm able to click this icon in the top, and now I'll see refresh all policies, and that will collect the policies that are assigned to that computer group where this computer group was just assigned. So now that the policy has been applied, I'm still here on my Mac 20 system signed in as admin 01, and you see this account does have admin permissions. And even though I'm an admin, we're able to enforce blocking at a policy level. So for an example, I'm blocking chess. If this administrator wanted to open up chess, we are able to block them with our custom messaging. Same goes for terminal access. If the user wants to run any commands they typically want to run, we're not going to block them, but we are able to block specific commands. And I am blocking specifically sudo su so that user can't elevate themselves into root. And same goes for su if they try to do that. It is also done on that back end. So now to take a look at how we solve for least privilege, here I have a standard user signed in to this Mac 20 system that we've been working with. And I'm able to come into the system preferences and allow or block certain applications or system preferences just like we were seeing before. So we've allowed specifically for this standard user to come in and change and unlock the date and time. They'll get this custom message from our Beyond Tr Trust product, and you can customize it with your logo and um, your language and links to even submit support tickets if needed. But typically, it's a simple yes, no prompt so that user can get in there, change the date, change the time zone, whatever they need to do. Another example would be the printers and scanners. For a standard user, they typically aren't allowed to do that. But with our solution, they're able to hit that unlock button as a standard user and we'll provide them a message prompt for elevation and they're able to add the printers that they need to. Looking at an application for an example, here we have Firefox that we can install. I'm just going to double click it and here you see we have that icon for privilege management that's saying, giving us a note saying, hey, this will allow us to stall as elevated. And there it's going to copy over Firefox into our applications folder. And all as a standard user, I was able to perform those tasks. completing a Firefox install. And also as a standard user, you see in the applications folder, there's that icon for privilege management. If I right click it, I'm able to see an option to say uninstall with privilege management as a standard user. I can select that and also remove applications. Going back to blocking applications, same for a standard user. In this policy, we're blocking chess. So I'm going to select chess here and we'll get a bundle blocked message. Not able to execute it. And I'm also blocking WhatsApp installer. So under our finder here, I'm going to try to install this WhatsApp file. And while it lets me get pretty far, I'm going to double click it here. Our application is still able to enforce our policies and block WhatsApp from installing. And so we're going to take a look at a couple of events that have come in from all the work we've been doing, installing and testing. So under this analytics button here, 
We have our summary events that we can take a look at, but I want to jump into under this events section, starting with all. And of course, you can adjust the time frame, but there you see there's our Mac 20 user 02 was the user we were signed in with, and it's blocking chess, blocking WhatsApp, blocking chess, Firefox install. Um, a lot of Firefox, as you see, it, we have a process to allow for the parent and child application to install. Um, there's the system preferences changes for that user 02 the work style it's associated with, if the admin rights were added or not. Looking for those admin ones, there you can see um, the admin events for SU passively, and there it blocks the pseudo SU. And if we want to see more detail, we can go ahead and see that process detail section. And there, we're looking at the same chess and WhatsApp applications. There's no command line parameters, but it does show the product version, uh, what message was presented, the block action taken, uh, what policy and application group that's a part of, the username, the host name, scripts, if you associate those with this application. And we're really able to create rules off of all of this information but primarily you start with a publisher rule in this column here. There you see where the WhatsApp publisher as well as the Mozilla Firefox Corporation publisher and those details. Another great feature about reporting is you're able to take events right from reporting and add them directly to policy. So there I selected the Firefox event and I selected add to policy and I'm going to select the policy that I want to put it in along with the corresponding application group. That's my allow list. And I'm going to add and edit it. And here you can see it brought in my Firefox application. And by default, it goes off a file folder name. I like to use Publisher because that is a unique application vendor identifier and this one for Mozilla Corporation. So if I save that and save and unlock, you've now added that publisher rule to policy and now end users will be able to install that application as needed. And that sort of wraps everything up. I wanted to thank everyone for watching the video. If you have any additional questions or want to learn more, please go to beyondtrust.com or you can reach our support department at support.beyondtrust.com and submit a support ticket.